plant science is only important if you want to eat, drink, wear clothes, have medicine, or breathe. Because, of course, plants produce oxygen. So clearly understanding plant science is of great interest to everyone. Every day I come into work, I see something that no one else on the planet has ever seen before. For the past five years, I've been really in the, in the very fortunate position of having a goal of, of bringing X-ray microscopy into plant science. But most imaging technologies, light, laser, and electron, the sample typically has to be small. You can only get high magnification with very, very small samples. So it's difficult to, to have context and that's the gap that the X-ray microscope fills. So we can take intact, complicated and delicate samples, like a small developing flower. We can put that entire sample in the instrument, image the entire thing in really rich, detailed three dimensions. So now you can look at this volume in any way, any orientation you wish, pull it apart, all electronically, while keeping the sample intact. But then with the multi-scale capability of this instrument, if we see a really interesting bit near the middle, leave the sample in the instrument, we just focus in on that, and now higher magnification, again, really rich, detailed 3D imaging, but within the context of the much larger sample. So if I collect developing flowers over many stages, we can do imaging of the development as it grows. And that's really where the important biological information comes out because in terms of plant science, certainly for producing food and producing medicine and producing grains, understanding that development is what we really need to do if we're going to be breeding plants that are more successful under more challenging conditions. If you're dealing with a drought, how does that impact normal developmental stages. How can we make plants better at doing their job? How can we make them better at producing grains with greater challenges? We need to do that with fewer inputs, less water, less fertilizer, less pesticide. How can we manage that? Well, we need to be able to study these things. And in terms of microscopy and imaging, it comes down to measurement. And that's where some of the AI comes in. I need to teach the computer to identify just that structure I want to see and ignore everything else. So we're using AI and specific types of machine learning models called deep learning. This is a way to teach a computer what to recognize in an iterative sense. Now, when it's good at that, it can very accurately tell me exactly how much fungal biomass is there, how much is inside the root, colonized and, and exchanging carbon for, for water and nutrients. There's no science that comes out of these really rich and sophisticated 3D volumes without using computational tools. This AI is a crucial component of what allows us to pull information out of a digital volume. What Zeiss has been able to do over the past year or two, they have software that is integrated into the X-ray microscope itself, which will look at the data that I'm generating and find ways to clean it up. Because the natural physics of projecting X-rays through these relatively large, dense samples causes some artifacts. It causes noise. So before I even sit down at the workstation to try to teach a computer what to find, the Zeiss software has already cleaned it up. So this is the integration at many levels and at different stages, how AI is playing a role in directly helping me to pull biology back out of these really sophisticated and detailed scans. Whoa.